Hi, today we're going to talk about Easy Morph Server. So we're going to do a quick overview. First things first, we have a project here and we are going to publish it to the server. So we're going to click this publish to server button. It's going to default to my space, which we'll talk about later. And I'm going to click publish. You see that it was already there, publish complete, and we are successful. So now let's navigate over to our Easy Morph server. I'm going to log in as a user. And now we have to create the new task. So the task is basically taking that project file that we just created, finding it, and sending it up to run on our server. So we found it. I can give it a nice little note if I want to. So in this case, it is my date generator. And we will assign our parameters. So my project had two parameters. In this case, a input date and an output date. I'd like my users to define those dates each time they run this project. So we left a default in there. I'm going to go ahead and click Create Task. And now we are going to go back and run it. So if I were to run this task, you'll see what the user sees. They are requested to, requested and required to put in a date. And let's just change this. So we'll go back a date and click Start. So the task already ran. And let's click back into it, see what it did. We can see that the log shows that it was successful and we can see the inputs. So we see my change right there. And let's go back. And this also generated a file. So let's navigate to files. And we see that there is a CSV file. So if I wanted this, I could click it, download it, and I have it on my local. Next project is a little bit more interesting. So we have our little CRM scrubber and we're gonna do a similar concept here. It has um, an input and an output. So let's go ahead and do that. We are gonna go back to tasks and click new task. We're gonna find that project, already had it published and it has a parameter as well. So the parameter in this case is actually a file. Um, each time that runs, we want our users to pick a file and I've just put a placeholder name there. So let's create it, go back and let's prompt. So if I knew the file path, file name, I could just type it in there. But in this case, of course, that file is not there. So let's go over to files and we can import it so I can upload it or I could just drag and drop. So I have it right here, just drag and drop and we see it was successful. So now that it's there, let's go back to my task, run it and browse. And we see it, select, start, and it was super fast. So it already finished up. So we can actually go over to files and we see there is my output file. So in that example, it's like a little scrubber. So that worked out really well. Now, the other thing we can do is not just run these ad hoc. We could actually schedule them. So let's use the same example. Um, if I unselect my parameters just because and I go to schedule, I could set this to run continuously and say I would like it to run every hour and between the hours of nine o'clock in the morning a.m. and let's say just mid afternoon here. So now what this is saying is this project or task will run every hour between this time. So I can actually see the status is going to show me when it's next going to run, which is tomorrow. So I can also go and look at logs. So I can see that every single time that has run um, anything I need to see there. Now let's go talk about the actual server. One of the things that we were working in is this is called a space. So my demo space. So let's go back to the server. We're going to log in as an administrator it has a password here and we are going to set up a space. So what you see right now is the log of everything on the server. Um, so we're just in there as an admin 
So spaces are useful for allowing you to configure segmented areas for files, repositories, and users. So in this case, let's set up a sales team space. So let's type that in. And I can also say that the repository is going to be the same. So it's like the default repository, or if I wanted to, I could create a brand new one. And that may be useful if we have some security con constraints or we just want to keep people isolated. So I have some extra security options too with passwords and things of that nature. And now we have created a space. So we see it has its own public folder, has its own repository. Um, security is uh, options that we can set. So who can edit the tasks, the files, repository. And if we had AD installed, we could even restrict our user access. So in this case, password, windows, or no. So let's go ahead and leave this no um, for the time being. And just looking at locations, we can even set our own specific look, specific file path. So let's go back to sales team. And we see it was configured. So on the administration side, we see everything laid out right here. And now let's go back out of here and back in as a user like we did earlier. So brand new space. So we see tasks and files. So that is an overview of the EasyMorph server and spaces. Thank you very much.